Am I the a-hole for telling my kids why we're getting a divorce? All right, this is messy. Me and my ex-wife got married at 23 and had three kids. The three kids are 17, 15, and 14. I recently found out my ex-wife has been cheating on me for three years. Once I confronted her, she broke down, saying that I was never home and always working. By the way, I worked like that so she could be a stay-at-home mom. I raised my kids to know that cheating is one of the worst things in the world. If you no longer love someone, break up with them. Don't cheat. Even if you have issues with a relationship, work it out or leave them. Now, before we sat them down, their mother begged me not to tell them she cheated. I told her that if they ask, I would not lie. She tried to dance around the whole reason for the divorce, citing adult issues. Then our 14-year-old asked why we were getting a divorce. And I told him, flat out, that she cheated on me for three years. The mother immediately burst out crying, and all the kids were incredibly angry with her. It's been three months, and they still haven't spoken to her, saying she ruined their family and their lives, and that she's a cheater and a liar. She's been coming after me online saying that I'm a bastard and ruined her relationship with her kids. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I'm a child of divorce. I would have rather known the truth at the time my parents split than learn it a few years later. Your wife cheated. That is a fact. But she wanted to conceal that fact. That is an unrealistic expectation. Bad news is not a fine wine. It does not improve with age. Her relationship with the children took a backseat to her infidelity the moment she cheated. You owe her nothing. Especially lying to protect her. Absolutely this. I still don't know what split up my parents 30 years ago. Not they home. If it makes you feel any better, I didn't want to tell my kids I was living in a dead bedroom before my divorce. And my ex-wife made it feel like I was the strange one because I liked kissing and having a physical relationship. And thought I should just accept it. I'm still not sure how you'd tell them that when my oldest was 12 at the time. She's been coming after me online saying that I'm a bastard and ruined her relationship with her kids. Oh my god, the nerve of that woman. She ruined her relationship with them when she decided to cheat on you. 100% not day home. And thank you for being honest with your kids and treating them like adults and not trying to sugarcoat it. They deserve honesty and transparency in this situation too. You didn't ruin anything. She did by cheating. I was the kid in the scenario before. And not once did I think it was my dad's fault for ruining my relationship with her for telling the truth. Nor did the slandering from her help. Stand by your kids' clothes. They'll need it too during this. Even consider family therapy. Not today, home. I was a kid in the scenario too. And I knew what my mother was doing. Kids know more than you think they know. My parents decided to stay together though. For my sister and I. So I grew up with an alcoholic mother constantly fighting with my dad. Thankfully, now my mom is sober and my best friend. And they are still married. Things worked out in the end. Not the day home. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my stepsister she's allowed to be unhappy about her parents' divorce and her dad's remarriage? Last year, my mom married her husband. She and I lost my dad three years before, while her new husband was divorced 13 months at that point. I'm the youngest of three, and my older siblings are both in college. My mom's husband has a 12-year-old daughter, and just like me, this is hard for her. She's still upset about her parents' divorce and isn't happy about her dad marrying my mom. I can say I'm happy for my mom, but not happy over all that we're here, that we were in a circumstance where she needed to remarry. Honestly, I'm not sure I would ever have been ready, so I can't say I would ever make a big deal out of it. She was grumpy last weekend, and her dad was trying to get her to spend some time with my mom. She ended up holding up in her room, and I went to go talk to her. She said I didn't get it, but I told her I didn't love it either. That my feelings were mixed, because my mom deserves to be happy and I was happy for her, but I couldn't say it made me happy. I told her it's okay not to be happy. I told her it was okay to be unhappy that her parents divorced and her dad remarried. That our feelings aren't wrong because they're our feelings. I told her it's not abnormal to be unhappy when your parents divorce. That I have friends who still wished their parents had a divorce after more than 10 years. That of course some people won't feel that way too. And it's fine. I told her if she felt like she needed to, she could probably find an adult she trusts to talk to. She ended up talking to her dad. And he and my mom are pissed about what I said to her. They told me it's not okay to be unhappy when your parents are happier, and that I should be happy to have grown my family again after a death. Does what I said make me the a-hole? 
not today, Hong. You probably helped the daughter by saying that, and it's simply true. No one should be forced to act happy about a certain thing, especially not when it's divorce and remarriage. The simple fact is that happiness can't be forced. Kiddo would have been feeling unhappy and then feeling guilty for not feeling happy. That's a rather cruel thing to do to anyone. Not today, Hong. Clearly, you have more emotional maturity than your mom and stepdad in this situation. Your comments are 100% right. Don't feel sorry for feeling this way or for saying it's a stepsister. Right? 100% OP, in my opinion, isn't a right and not today, Hong. In fact, by acknowledging the feelings, it would be possible to move past them. Your parents are doing a great job making sure she resents the situation forever. Not today, Hong. Your mom and stepdad need to take off their psychedelic glasses and realize their marriage is about them. Stepsister should not be forced to spend time with your mom. I know her dad thinks it will facilitate the bonding process, but at the age you girls are, the happy blended family may never happen. Socially functioning blended family may be the best that can happen. You girls need to build relationships with your step parents at a pace you feel comfortable with. Good for you for talking to your step. I'm sure it's made her feel good that someone understood. Hugs. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for giving my stepson's room to my daughter? I'll try to keep this short. I have been married to my wife for over a year now. I have a stepson, 14 male, and a biological daughter, 9 female. When we married, my wife and I agreed that I would sell my house and move into hers because there's more living space. Stepson already had his own room, so my daughter got the extra bedroom which is smaller than his. It was fine at first, but my daughter has a lot of stuff and soon it became too small and cramped for her. Stepson also lives with us part-time, five days with us, nine days with my dad, and has a huge room at his dad's. My daughter lives with us full-time, so this is her only room. It seemed to me that the logical thing would be for my daughter to have the larger room since she has more stuff and spends all of her time here. Wife was hesitant at first, and felt like my stepson would be upset and feel like he's being pushed aside. But I convinced her that my daughter needed a space more, so she ultimately agreed. We ended up switching rooms this week, freshly painted them, and my wife did some shopping for stepson's new room so he'd feel special. He came home from his dad's and we surprised him with his new room. He reacted okay, thanked us for the new stuff and didn't seem upset at first, but now he's been moping and has been cold to all of us. Wife is now regretting our choice upset at me for convincing her that it would be fine. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole for not discussing with your stepson first. At least give the kid a heads up. Jesus. That's what I was thinking. He's old enough to have discussed this first. Info. Why did you bother to run this by your stepson? I mean, considering he reacted okay, he sounds like a decent kid. But WTF? I'd be pissed if I was just ejected from my room by my stepdad without my input. Even if it was for understandable reasons. You're the a-hole for the surprise alone. The rest of your reasoning makes some sense. But you really disrespected him by doing it this way. This was a beg for forgiveness instead of ask permission kind of scenario. You're the a-hole. Talk about prioritizing one kid over the other. This whole world is changing. His mom is remarrying. He has a new parent and sibling moving in. He has to go back and forth between houses. And you just completely took away safe space to give it to your kid. Now you can't be certain that he doesn't feel like a part of your family. Because when he left for a few days, you took away his room. I feel awful for him. Imagine coming back to that. Surprise! Your room is gone. Your new little stepsister took it. Wow, I feel sick. If you're not ready to parent both kids equally, which it sounds like you're not. Please don't move in with this kid. Next story. Am I the a-hole for giving my stepmom a letter from my sister, knowing it would upset her and my dad? I, 16 male, lost my sister five months ago. She'd had cancer for almost two years. She knew she was dying, and before it happened, she wrote a letter telling our stepmom she had never loved her, never wanted her around, and that she was not welcome at her funeral, as well as other stuff my sister didn't tell me about. I knew the idea of the letter was to let our stepmom know she had never grown to love her. She asked me to give it to her before she died, and I did what she asked. I heard nothing about the letter for months, but neither my dad nor stepmom showed up to the funeral, and my dad was talking to me like normal. Then a month ago, he confronted me over it. 
He asked what kind of stunt it was and how could I be so cruel to someone who was grieving. I told him she had wanted me to give her the letter, that she wrote it and wanted our stepmom to know. I think he was shocked because he seemed to think I wrote the letter or something. Or maybe our mom did since she and our stepmom always hated each other's guts. My dad was really upset and asked had she always felt that way. I said yes. He stopped the conversation and went back to his place. And it was a week after when he and my stepmom said I was a cruel bastard for doing that to them. That I should have burned the letter and let my sister's last words to my stepmom be something else. My dad told me he was done with me. That I had broken his wife's heart. That I had trampled on 13 years of being our stepmom. All to help my sister's bitterness be the thing that lived on instead of something else. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You did something incredibly hard. The fact that your dad is willing to miss his daughter's funeral and then cut you out after this speaks volumes about what kind of trash daddy is. I'm so, so sorry for your loss. Dad is a horrendous father, but dad's sister pulled a super prick move in Opie. Why didn't she pass the letter on herself? Or even ask Opie to put it in mail for her? Sister had to know this would cause blowback. That's why she never said this stuff when she was alive. She selfishly put Opie in a position to take the heat, and there was no reason for this. Opie, be kind to yourself. You haven't done anything wrong. Not today, home. First off, I just want to say that I'm truly sorry for your loss, and that you are having to deal with the stupidity while you grieve. You carried out sister's final wishes. You had nothing to do with what she said or how she felt. Your father and stepmom are major a house though. I understand that they are grieving as well. But to take that out on you is disgusting. They should really be taking the time to evaluate their own actions and try to understand what they did to make your sister feel the way that she did. Don't feel bad about anything regarding this situation. You are not at fault and you did nothing wrong. Info. I feel like there's got to be more to this story. Like, what's your stepmom like? Why did your sister dislike her so much? I have an issue with how strict she can be and how she expected us to follow her rules when we were at home with our mom. I don't hate her, though, but my sister had much deeper issues with her that I'm not even sure of why. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hall for refusing to be a surrogate for my sister-in-law because of vanity? I, 25 female, used to be so close with my sister-in-law. My brother and I were close growing up. And when he started dating and eventually met his now wife almost six years ago, I was thrilled because she is an amazing woman who brings out the best in him. She has also supported me in coming out to my family as a lesbian, being the first to proudly display her support, and she makes my brother happier than I have ever seen him. I say all of this because the turn of events has left me entirely distressed. For the past three years after they got married, they have been trying to get pregnant. They got some medical procedures done, and eventually learned one of them is infertile. Since then, they have been looking into alternatives. One of them was surrogacy. Last month, I was on call with my brother and his wife when they started to very subtly hint that surrogacy is expensive, and they were sure that they wanted a biological child to be related to at least one of them. My brother suggested maybe they could find someone within the family willing to volunteer. I wished them luck, and they both kind of stared at me, and then it clicked. I immediately said I would not be their surrogate. I loved them and felt for them, but I was never going to get pregnant, ever. They seemed disappointed, but moved on. Ever since, they have been bugging me, dropping hints, but I have always disengaged or cut them off sharply on the topic. Then three days ago, my sister-in-law and I went to our downtown area for book shopping, and I made it clear to her that I would not discuss surrogacy with her or I would leave. We passed by a clothing shop with a toddler mannequin, and she broke down and eventually snapped at me why I wouldn't do this one thing for her and my brother. And this is where I may be the a-hole. I have low self-confidence in how I look, and I always have. I am on a curvy side of body shaping, leaning towards heavier build, and I hate it. I've never felt beautiful in my life. And our pregnancy absolutely destroys women's bodies, and I'm only barely beginning to feel good when I see my reflection. I know that a pregnancy would absolutely destroy that. I lost my temper when she started begging and yelled at her that I would not be destroying my self-confidence for her and my brother and stormed off. We drove in separate cars. I feel bad because I know that they really want a family and I do love my sister-in-law, but I just cannot do this for them. They have been calling and texting, but I haven't answered. There are other reasons, but this is the big one and what I said specifically in this situation. Am I the a-hole? Edited to end.
Okay, because I saw this in the comments a couple of times that I also realized how gross this sounded without clarification. My brother is the one who cannot have children. Sister-in-law is worried about how my brother would feel if she got pregnant by another man because he was cheated on by a previous flame. It was a big thing that nearly destroyed him until he met my sister-in-law. And he has admitted in the past that he could not handle it if she was carrying another man's child. Saying that makes me realize that they sound even more a-hollish. I will be speaking to them after I have a few more days to calm down and gather some research and then speaking to them about this. I will make sure to include laws and details about surrogacy and I will tell them that I am willing to help them look into adoption. But after the harassment, I do not think I would be a good person for a character witness if they choose to go that route. No matter how this talk goes, I will be taking a step back from my relationship with them. Thank you for all the prompt advice and support. Now for the comments. Not a hole. Professional agencies wouldn't even let you do it. They want surrogates to have already given birth before because only those women really understand the commitment being made. To be clear, even if you already had a child, you'd still be not day hall for refusing. Surrogacy is such a big deal that surrogates are paid $30,000 or more. Someone asking for a $30,000 favor is a lot, and they should be fully prepared to hear no. Not day hall. Being a surrogate is a giant task. You have to have the right frame of mind for it most of all. There is a reason why it is so expensive. And honestly, if you have body-related issues, you probably wouldn't pass to be a paid surrogate, like an official one, anyways. Giving the gift of a child is the biggest physical and mental thing a woman can be asked to do. And no woman should ever be forced, coerced, guilted into doing so regardless of the situation. It is not your responsibility to supply your brother and sister-in-law with children. They are not a-holes for asking, but they are for pushing.